Good morning. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, rural sanitation in developing countries. Um, I'll give. Uh, I have uh, three slideshows, and uh, I'll promise to do them fast. Not three hours like in the original program, but faster. Uh, actually, the presentation, last one, is uh, from tomorrow that we take today also. So there's no uh, lecture tomorrow morning. Well, uh, we want to know why, why do we need to have sanitation? Um, so we all understand the, uh, the objectives. Uh, then we look into the designs. Uh, what kind of designs do we have? How is the link between sanitation and hygiene? Uh, why doesn't it not work just to build latrines? Why do you need to combine it with uh, hygiene uh, education? And then we have something about sustainable sanitation. And we have this about uh, IEC tools. It's information, education and communication. It's a, a special toolbox uh, for how to communicate with uh, uh, stakeholders. And then we have a, a short presentation of uh, latrine building materials, so you can have some uh, idea about the prices. So, why sanitation? Uh, it's not only a place where you uh, defecate or shit, you also have uh, the concern about privacy. Uh, most of us, we would like to have a, a, a toilet door that we can lock for privacy. Uh, convenience, uh, it should be nice uh, uh, for us, a uh, seat, uh, heat. Um, in uh, developing uh, countries, uh, security is also an issue. If you go out at night, uh, you don't have a toilet, you need to go a little bit far from the house. Uh, you might risk uh, of getting attacked. Uh, also, status. Uh, if you can show you have a bigger toilet than the neighbor. It's like here in Denmark, we have a bigger car or bigger television. Um, then again, we have the habits. What are people actually used to? Uh, if nobody in the whole village are used to latrines, then it's a little bit difficult to introduce. Um, you will improve the hygiene if you actually know how to uh, build uh, good quality latrines and it will improve the health. And there are probably a number of other reasons, but no more space. Okay, uh, you have seen this one uh, yesterday and the day before. Um, this is uh, my version of compiling uh, from the different uh, F-diagrams, uh, all the benefits. Um, you can find something uh, very similar on the internet, uh, but I've put in an extra line here uh, to show that uh, VAP, Ecosan, Poor Flush are uh, limiting these uh, three, and the simple pit latrines are, are limiting these two. Um, and then, uh, well, the colors are not uh, good, but there should be some color over here. Uh, talking about improved water quality, that's where you uh, make barriers for the uh, fecal oral uh, transmission routes. Up in the top, you have uh, improved hygiene, uh, going down to food hygiene, and then over here, uh, with these barriers, you have the uh, improved sanitation that will create barriers from uh, these uh, fecal oral uh, transmission routes. In some of the uh, F diagrams you see, uh, you have an extra uh, line directly from uh, feces to food. And uh, I always say it's not original, it should not be there. Uh, because uh, my interpretation is that you shit on your food. Uh, but yesterday I discovered that it's if you use uh, water, uh, dirty water, for irrigating your crops. So if you use river water, for example, and somebody else is shitting upstream, 
then you have polluted water and you put it on your crops. That's effectively the same thing as somebody else is shitting on your crops. So if you have a, a F diagram with five, it's okay. Uh, I'll upload some uh, more detailed explanation about how to understand the F diagram. Um, now, we have a small test here. What percentage of the 1.5 million uh, children, uh, child annual, annual child death is caused by diarrhea are preventable? Um, any question? Oh, no, sorry, any guess? How much of the uh, child diarrhea, child death from diarrhea can you prevent? I can't actually remember. <laughs> you don't know? I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you later. Um, oh, to take the glasses. What does it say? 9%. 90%. 90%. Oh. In all the world? Or? If, if you actually uh, do the proper interventions, then you have 90% of the children dying from diarrhea now who do not need to die. That's very nice. So <coughs> we have to learn how to do the right thing. Um, why do we focus on diarrhea prevention? Uh, well, uh, it's a major burden uh, for the families, the health system. Uh, uh, you have to take care of the sick children uh, or if the children dies, it's also a, a burden for the family. Um, it uh, has a, a adverse effect on, on the small children under five. Uh, uh, they don't grow so much. Uh, they're not so uh, active in school later. Uh, they don't learn so much. So they'll be behind in uh, development. Uh, we have the table here uh, looking at the weight development uh, according to age and it's also uh, slower. Um, so it will have a negative impact on household economy, uh, education and the time spent. Now, another <laughs> pop quiz. <laughs> How many people in the world lack access to hygiene, hygienic sanitation facilities? I guess again? No? <laughs> How much? D. D. That's right. Uh, 2.6 billion people don't have access to, to uh, hygienic sanitation facilities. And that's also including the public? So they don't, if they have uh, access to public sanitation? So. Well, wherever is shit. If I count one, I count one. <laughs> <laughs> the point is that uh, you have uh, slightly more than a third of the population in the world uh, who don't have a proper place uh, to okay. shit. Uh, and that's a lot of shit every day getting in the wrong place. Uh, I read that about it uh, yesterday huh? uh, that uh, the people in China and in India huh? they have the big problem. So all the problem is in China and India. Yes, but... You also have problems in, uh, in Africa, Africa most but... Most of people in China and India have yeah. a big problem with yeah. sanitation and... Uh, mm -hmm. And especially because China and India are the biggest countries in the world. Exactly. They count for most. <laughs> um, now, a definition of sanitation depends uh, on culture, it depends on uh, your language, the language you speak. Uh, in, in our case here, uh, we'll be defining as uh, management of uh, humus, human excreta. Excreta is feces and, and urine. Uh, in other uh, context, it can be management of uh, a lot of other waste, uh, solid waste, wastewater, storm water, and even hand washing. Uh, 
but we just have it for feces and urine management. Okay, in uh, rural areas in developing countries, uh, most people are using uh, on-site facilities, if they have any. Uh, it means that we don't use sewers, we don't have uh, pipes with uh, uh, wastewater running. It's far too expensive. Um, in some cultures, uh, you can actually reuse or move the, the feces uh, after it has been uh, stored for a period, being, uh, becoming hygienic. But that's only if it's uh, culturally uh, acceptable. And it should also have an advantage uh, for, for the users. If there's no advantage, uh, then the motivation will become uh, low. And then it doesn't function. Uh, wastewater in sewers, uh, forget about it. It's uh, far too expensive. Now, uh, the principles of on-site sensation. We have shit, we have urine. We put it into a receptacle. It can be a hole in the ground or a build-up uh, box, depending on what kind of sensation we want to do. Uh, we'll have, uh, apart from the, the shit and urine, we'll have uh, water and uh, some kind of uh, material for wiping. Uh, if it's newspaper, toilet paper, leaves, we don't know. Sometimes they also come a little bit of waste uh, down. Um, then, at some stage, uh, uh, this will transform into a, a mass uh, where the water has uh, disappeared and uh, we have a final uh, deposit. Now, that final deposit could be used, moved, uh, used for agriculture. Uh, you can take the urine straight when it's uh, still fresh, uh, not putting it into a pit or receptacle and also used for agriculture to recycle the nutrition. Uh, you have most nutrition in the urine, that's uh, nitrogen. Uh, the composted uh, feces is more like a soil conditioner. It doesn't have a high nutritional value. When we want to calculate how, how big should this container be or pit, uh, in most of the books, including your textbook, uh, you will have a, a table looking more or less like this. It's the uh, uh, traditional model. I call it the static model. Uh, it's based on observations uh, of uh, lifetime compared to volume, compared to number of users. And then they go in and say, if you have a wet pit where you add a lot of water, um, you will have uh, you need to have uh, 0 .0 0 0.04 cubic meter per person per year. And then you say, okay, I have five people, I want it to last for 10 years, then I get this volume. Um, and that is if you only use water for annual cleansing. If you use uh, other stuff, uh, you need to increase the volume. This is translated into 40 uh, uh, liters uh, per person per year. So you have five people in the family, it's 200 liters, 10 years, 2,000 liters. Here, uh, it will become 3,000 liters. Now, if you have a dry pit with anal cleansing with water or solids, your numbers increases because the decomposition processes are a little bit slower. Uh, I'll show you another model uh, with more realistic numbers because uh, the last one can actually become quite big, uh, uh, too big actually. There's a, a, a thing, uh, I want to explain this, uh, PE uh, is a person equivalent. Uh, it's uh, equal to an uh, adult of uh, 70 kilos. So according to body weight, if you have a child, 35 kilos, half a PE. Infant, quarter of PE. So when I talk about a standard family of five PE, it can actually be four uh, adults, parents, uh, big children, then uh, one small one and uh, two infants. So you might have up to seven people. 
but we just use as a standard five people, five adults. Um, now, uh, WHO have made a big report and they come up with uh, the average for one person on, on this world is producing 100 liters of feces per year. Um, I'll be using these uh, numbers on the next slide. Um, the whole point is that the static model do not take into account uh, the dewatering and decomposition of the fecal matter uh, over time. It does, but only on a short time scale. Uh, the next model will uh, be dealing with latrines that can last for much more than uh, 10 years. Um, the dynamic model will take into account the dewatering and decomposition uh, over time, where after a period of six years, you only have about six to 10% volume left, uh, provided you don't put a lot of uh, rubbish, uh, solid waste into uh, the pit. Uh, so the purple line is if you use the static uh, formula for designing, you just have a, a, a constant increase in volume. But if you take the dynamic model, uh, it will actually even out after the first six years and only increase like uh, 50 liters uh, per year per family because the 5P will produce five times 100 liters of feces, which will go down to 10%. Um, now, you can actually extend uh, this one to uh, 20 years and it will still be uh, just a, under here, uh, 2000. Uh, so to be sure that you have enough space, you need to make a pit of uh, 2000 to 2500 liters and then you'll have a lifetime for 20 plus years. In the latrines, uh, we have uh, three parts. Uh, the top uh, is a protection, uh, privacy, uh, of giving shade, depending on the model. Uh, we have a platform, that's the floor, so you don't fall into the hole. And that's what you have in the bottom, the receptacle. Uh, I don't write hole because sometimes you might build a, a box. Uh, but these are the parts. So uh, the person will be sitting up here and all the waste will go down here, the liquids will infiltrate, and the solids here will decompose over time. Right? So, uh, types of on-site sanitation. You have a simple latrine, like the model we just saw. Uh, the cover in the middle can be very simple. We've seen some of the pictures from uh, Tanzania. Uh, not all of you, but uh, you have some uh, wood uh, with some uh, mud. Um, it works. It's just difficult to clean. Uh, so it's not so hygienic. Uh, in order to improve uh, the quality uh, so you can clean it easier, you can uh, use uh, concrete or plastic slab. Um, you can go in and uh, put some ventilation. The VIP latrine is ventilated improved pit latrine. Uh, it's a model that takes away smell and also uh, very much reduce uh, the number of flies uh, coming out of the pit. Um, you have something where uh, you put the superstructure aside uh, so you don't build it on top of the pit. Uh, that might actually uh, facilitate uh, that you can uh, uh, dig out the stuff later or you don't need uh, so much support on the pit because there's not so much weight. Um, or you can have a raised, raised pit latrine if you have uh, high, high water uh, or risk of flooding. Uh, you might uh, want to get it a little bit up and uh, then if you want to go uh, ecological you might have uh, 
two receptacles. So you use one for a period uh, and then you shift to another one while the first one is resting until it's hygienic. Then you can uh, empty the first one and then you shift back uh, and then you just shift every year. Uh, you can make it with uh, uh, ventilation also. Um, we have another type uh, where you have uh, water flushed uh, latrines. Um, it's called poor flush. Again, you can build uh, different models uh, where you can have uh, the pit and the flush pan. This is a flush pan uh, offset, uh, not on top of it. Uh, you can have two uh, pits, again, for, for the purpose of uh, being able to empty it while it's uh, hygienic. You shouldn't empty a, a, a new pit because it's full of fresh shit. Uh, that's very dirty work. And then, of course, you can have uh, flush toilets with uh, septic tanks that we know from Denmark also, from the rural areas or summer houses. Uh, the ecological sanitation, we have something called Apolu. Uh, it's, it's a mix of, of Latin and, and English. It's actually uh, translated into, into plant a tree latrine. So you have a very shallow pit and then you plant uh, a tree when it's uh, after half a year and you dig another a small pit. You move the whole uh, superstructure and slap. Uh, Forst Alterna is a, a, a cousin to this system where you have two pits and you shift between them. But you move the slab and the superstructure. Uh, and then you empty uh, from time to time. Uh, a Swedish model, Muldrum uh, latrine, very advanced, very expensive. Uh, last year we had uh, some case uh, villages in Himalaya, so we introduced a, a model fit for Himalaya. Um, I don't think it will uh, work for India and Tanzania, but it's nice to see. Uh, and then double vault latrine again. Two, two containers, so you can use one for a period, then you shift and let it rest, and then after some time it's hygienic and you can move it out. And then we have this uh, shared sanitation, uh, shared latrines uh, between a number of families or public latrines for a big uh, group. Um, Many people will be talking about ecological sanitation because this issue of uh, reusing the, the nutrition uh, has a lot of value in people's mind. Um, it also has a lot of problems. Uh, so it should only be uh, used in, in, in cases where it's really thought through and people actually accept and fully understand the implications of uh, doing this. People have to accept and there must be a benefit. If there's no benefit of uh, removing uh, the shit every year, then people will lose uh, motivation. Uh, you can actually get some value, uh, especially from the urine. Uh, um, here it goes in and talk about the uh, the content, the, the quantity, and what value it will represent if you use it for uh, agriculture, uh, recycling the nutrition. So $30, $40 a year for a family, that's, that's okay if you're very poor. Uh, so it can work uh, if you have the proper uh, introduction to the, uh, to the subject and, and uh, catch people uh, and convince them. We have something called a uh, sanitation ladder where we start in the bottom with the uh, open defecation that we don't like. We want to do something better. Uh, we call it a ladder because you step up and you get improved quality every time you step. So it could, for example, be unimproved uh, latrine, then improved slab, VAP latrine, something else. Uh, poor flush, and then in the end, a flush toilet like we have here at the DTU. Uh, the ladder can actually be designed uh, to, to, different, uh, uh, to look different 
depending on your project areas, uh, because you might uh, decide that there's some methods, uh, building technologies that are more suited uh, to your project area compared to others. It could be based on uh, culture also. Uh, you should not introduce a technology that is against people's culture. If people want to use water, they need to have something using water. Um, this is unimproved pit latrine uh, with some wood, uh, some uh, other materials. Uh, actually, uh, it looks like it's almost full. So uh, <laughs> it should be improved very soon. And the flies can get in and out, smell uh, also. And uh, most likely the, the pit is not lined, so there could be a risk of a collapse. Uh, but it's very cheap. So it's better than shitting in the bush. Now, you could go in and improve it by uh, using a, a concrete slab um, for cover. Um, and then you can put in a lid, and that will uh, reduce the number of flies getting in, uh, putting eggs there. It will not eliminate it, but uh, it will reduce. You have a detail with the feet. Uh, it's a small elevated uh, template for where to put your feet. So when you actually put your feet there, the heels, depending on your big or small person, you just put the heels uh, where it indicates the heels. And then when you squat down, uh, you will hit uh, right in the uh, bullseye. Um, here we have uh, a similar round model uh, with the hole. The difference here is that uh, it's uh, dome shaped, uh, like like a, a plate you turn upside down. Um, so it does not need uh, metal uh, iron inside. Um, it's, it's just another uh, model. Um, if using it for rural sanitation, uh, you need quite a large diameter so it can be resting out here. Uh, and then the weight comes up to about 180 kilos. So you should only produce it in a place where it's next to uh, where you're going to use it. Um, and where it can be transported. So in the, the hills of uh, Likamba, not a good idea. <laughs> you can not roll it up the hill. Um, here we have the ventilated improved pit latrine. Uh, the, the feature here is that uh, you have a ventilator, ventilation shaft. It could be a, a pipe minimum uh, 10 centimeters diameter or a, a, a chimney built of uh, bricks. 40 by 40 centimeters. And then on the top, uh, you should have a mosquito net, but uh, the mosquito net will prevent flies getting out, but it will permit sunlight to get in. And then what happens, uh, you leave it open here uh, to have cross ventilation. And then once in a while, a fly will get down here and uh, put eggs and they'll hatch. And then when the new flies uh, open their eyes the first time, They'll look for light. And because the superstructure is uh, semi-shade, uh, the flies will see more light here uh, in the chimney, in the ventilation, and they go up through the chimney, hit the mosquito net, and they die. Not, not by hitting the net, but they can't get out, they can't get any food. Um, and so it actually uh, take out the smell, and it uh, reduces very uh, significantly the, the number of flies. You just have to make sure that it's not a, a, a small closed thing on top that does not permit light, uh, and it uh, should not be uh, permitting the flies to get in and out. So a piece of mosquito net uh, on top is very nice. Uh, this picture is from uh, Durban. Uh, where Henrik uh, went to visit some years back. Uh, it's a little bit uh, steep area, so part of the, the pit is built above ground. Uh, this model is also from uh, South Africa, 
or used in the southern Africa. Uh, it's actually called uh, read orderless earth closet. Um, I've seen it in function in South Africa. Um, it's a very smart concept uh, where uh, the concrete cover on top of the pit uh, will heat up and uh, the hot air will make sure that you get a, a, a ventilation um, and it will assist with dehydrating uh, the waste. The only problem is uh, this uh, chute. Uh, you have a seat and then you have something going a little bit like this into the pit. Uh, it's a little bit tricky to, to clean. Uh, but many people are using them in uh, Southern Africa. Um, I'm not sure if it's from uh, India or Vietnam, uh, but it's a raised pit latrine with jute again. Uh, so uh, you have in, inside just an opening and you uh, defecate there and then it will go down into a small pit uh, underneath. Um, the reason is raised may be that sometimes it gets a little bit flooded uh, and that's also not very smart because then the pit will actually flood. So the pit should also have been raised. But if it's an online pit, you cannot raise it if it's just a hole in the ground. So that was not a good example. Uh, twin pit, uh, you use one pit for a year, then you change to the other one. Um, so you have inside, uh, you have two holes, but you're only using one at a time. And then uh, the big lid, you shift uh, once a year, and then you use the other one. Now when you build a thing like this, you have to remember the rules for construction of VIP. One pit, one squat hole, one ventilation. If you try to save on the plastic pipe and, and share one plastic pipe for the ventilation, then you will get cross ventilation and, and you will get smell uh, going from one side to the other. Uh, it does not work. The Apollo plant a tree latrine. Uh, the, the concept is that uh, you use uh, the, the waste, uh, uh, you recycle the nutrition, not, but without touching it. You do it by planting a tree uh, in the old pit and, and you make small pits only. Uh, they're like one meter deep only. Uh, you have a, a small ring for supporting the, the slab and you have a superstructure that is so light that it can be moved. Um, also the slabs can be constructed in a way that they are in, in two parts uh, with the ring and, and, and with a smaller slab uh, so they're easy to, to carry. Uh, so every 6 to 12 months uh, you dig a new pit and you move the whole thing. Um, and then you can plant trees and they will grow very well. So uh, this has been, it, this is a kind of ecological sanitation that has been uh, introduced in Malawi and has been very successful with uh, poor families where the women, they grab this technology and they actually learn to do the, the concrete work uh, themselves. Uh, so they don't need to ask the husbands or the men, the old men, uh, if this is okay. They just go and do it. Uh, this is a Swedish model. Um, it's quite expensive. Uh, it works in a way where you put uh, kitchen waste uh, into the pit uh, and then uh, you have a kind of grill in the bottom so you have a nice uh, ventilation and then it should by itself uh, compost and uh, move uh, when it's composted uh, the composted material will fall down and then you can take it out in the bottom. So you, you don't, even that you only have one chamber, you will not be touching the new shit because that will be up in the other end. Uh, 
this thing works some places in Sweden, but because of the cost, uh, you, you cannot introduce it uh, in a sustainable way in, in developing countries. This is the uh, indoor dehydrating toilet in Himalaya. Um, in the summer, you go in and transport some soil upstairs on the first floor in the building. Uh, you might have uh, cows living down here for heating purpose and you, the family lives up there. Then you have the toilet on the first floor <coughs> with a lot of soil in that room and a hole. And then uh, you shit in the hole and then you scoop some soil down and then it will uh, dehydrate uh, uh, the feces. And uh, next summer you just dig out the whole thing and, and you can put it on the field. It's not perfectly uh, hygienic because you will still have some fresh uh, shit uh, by the time you, you dig out. Um, we have the double vault uh, compost latrine. Uh, it's actually elevated. Uh, now here it's partly dug down, but other models, they just start from here and up. Uh, and you have uh, one part here, and then this seat you can move uh, over here. So every year you move, and then the part here will rest for a year, and then it should be hygienic, and you can move it out. Um, they in South America uh, they're very popular, uh, especially because they have the seat, uh, but also they understand the. Uh, uh, the thing about ecological sensation, uh, but when introduced in uh, in Africa, uh, it's a little bit tricky uh, because there's this general uh, not taboo, but people don't like to mess with uh, shit uh, from from human beings, uh, and they are very expensive also compared to other models. So usually. They're only built uh, when an organization go in and pay 100%. Um, we have the poor flush latrine. Uh, we have the flush slap. Uh, we have a water seal, uh, so you don't actually get the smell back. Uh, but then you have to flush with uh, two, three liters of water uh, every time you have used it. So you see the bucket, and after use, you flush. Uh, the first slab is made of concrete, uh, the second slab is uh, made of china. Um, it's slightly more expensive, but not, not so much. Uh, here you can uh, elevate uh, the level. Uh, if you are in a zone where there's risk of uh, flooding, uh, these two place cases in India at least uh, go What's the name of the island? Kosapa. Uh, there might be some risk of flooding when they have uh, cyclones. Um, here it's using uh, well concrete uh, rings. Uh, it's a little bit expensive. There are other uh, building techniques that uh, reduce the cost. Um, if you're a little bit fancy, uh, you say, uh, I want to build this inside my house and then I have the pit outside my house. Um, that's very nice. Uh, and then of course, you can make two of them. So you can empty them uh, one at a time every year. And this system can then function for many, many years because it never gets full. You will empty one of them uh, every year. And then we have the septic tank. Uh, it's a little bit tricky, it's expensive. Uh, it has to be emptied once in a while. Uh, and uh, you empty it, uh, well, in Denmark you call a truck or a tractor with a special pump. Uh, you shouldn't empty it by hand, but uh, if you don't have other means, you will do it, but it will have a mixture of old and fresh feces. So it's not hygienic to empty by hand. Um, so it should only actually be used for 
uh, institutions, uh, schools, uh, where there is access uh, for a truck and there should be a truck in the area that can come and uh, empty it uh, every, every once a year. So for households, poor household, not, not okay. Uh, public latrines, this is from Ghana. Um, the problem is maintenance. Uh, some organization built this, uh, nice quality, uh, one cubicle, one pit, uh, one chimney, uh, well, two holes, that's a mistake. <laughs> um, but nobody is maintain, maintaining it, uh, so uh, it's, it's not very clean. Uh, people are still using it, but uh, it's not hygienic. Um, we have a urinal for boys up here, and this is urinal for girls, for schools. Um, it's a it's a way of uh, of saving costs and and increasing the uh, service service level. Um, you need to in the afternoon uh, when you start uh, working uh, on uh, working paper number two, uh, you need to take a, a guess of uh, what kind of latrine would be suitable for for your village. Uh, uh, there might be several types. Uh, and it's nice to give people a choice, uh, not only have one model suits all. Um, and then go in and discuss a little bit uh, how is this particular model useful, uh, what's its advantage. Uh, and also look into disadvantages compared to other models. Um, the shape of the pit. Um, I didn't uh, make a design that is uh, square uh, because I don't want to put it into your mind, but I will mention it anyway. Uh, you you know that uh, the perimeter compared to the area uh, is bigger when you have something square compared to a, a circle. So uh, for a line pit with a wall material you'll use more wall material for the same volume. Uh, so that's one reason for not making square line pits. Uh, the online pits, uh, the square holes in the ground are less strong compared to the uh, uh, round holes. The round hole distribute the, the, the forces uh, much better. So always think round uh, when you do uh, pits. Uh, online pits or line pits. For the online pits, you need to have them deep and narrow, uh, four to six meters, 90 to 100 centimeters diameter. If you do the line pits, uh, it's an advantage. Uh, if you have a system where you have a, a, a fat uh, bottle shape, uh, you will reduce the material cost uh, quite considerably. Uh, and in places with high water level, uh, you don't need to go very deep. Um, if you're using uh, bricks or something, uh, the technique is called corbelling, where you use fewer and fewer bricks, so you, you uh, decrease the diameter. Um, Local materials are, are cheap, like wood, uh, locally produced uh, bricks, uh, sand, stones, again from the local area. Of course you have some areas where you don't have stones. Uh, I was working in the uh, Amazonas River. Uh, they don't have stones within 1,000 kilometers. So uh, you have to think if you want to make concrete. Uh, they only have mud. Um, uh, then, like non-local materials, uh, could be cement pipes, uh, roof sheets. Uh, the price of that will will be uh, much higher uh, compared to the local materials. In this course, we just set a standard price of six dollars uh, per fifty kilos of uh, cement from the factory. Then. If your village is very far from the factory, uh, we could go in and say, uh, let's make a small game and say, 
for each uh, 100 kilometers uh, will add uh, 0.4 dollars uh, to a bag of cement for transport. And we define the, the place of the factory with the nearest uh, city uh, with uh, 250,000 people. Um, we also standardize the, the, the pipes we are using for, for uh, ventilation, uh, half a dollar per meter. And again, you can add uh, some price. Uh, so so you, you understand that the farther out in the country that you're working, the more expensive it will be. Uh, roof sheets, uh, $5 for two, for, per square meter. Uh, and you can define your own shape of the roof sheet. One by two meters, uh, stand up but you can have any shape um, to have sustainable to implement sustainable sanitation is very important that uh, a demand is created people should want to have a latrine uh, if not they don't want to invest uh, when I talk about investing uh, the people should invest is because sustainability uh, is when stuff no, activities can continue after you leave. If you bring a lot of money from Denmark and you pay for all the latrines, uh, 100 latrines in the village, and then you leave again, then there'll not be built any more latrines because people, first, they'll be waiting for you to come back to build more latrines. Uh, secondly, you might have built latrines that are too expensive. Uh, and uh, you might have built latrines where people were not really interested. Uh, so you need to have a demand uh, and you need to make sure that this demand is created in a way so people are actually willing to pay the full cost because then the, st the activities can continue after you leave. Um, so if the demand is not there yet, then you will work to create the demand. Uh, and then you need to offer uh, various affordable solutions so uh, you need to present several uh, models from the very very low cost to the medium low cost to the low cost uh, when I make projects I, I used to have uh, like five models at least uh, and then people can choose uh, you don't need to have that many How do you create a demand? You give them an offer that is, a, a, you show that you build a demonstration latrine of five of them, different models that are so nice and the price is so low that they say, oh, I didn't know that I could get a latrine this cheap. Uh, I cannot afford the most expensive one and I'm not that poor, so, so I need to buy the lowest price one. But uh, this number two or number three model I can afford, I'll take one. That's it. That's what you're going to learn today and tomorrow. Um, uh, sanitation is linked very closely to hygiene promotion. Um, there are different uh, ways of doing that. Uh, I'll tell about it uh, in the next lecture after a break. Um, but. The point is, is just the point that you need to combine the two. You cannot just introduce a technical solution without having uh, the, uh, the hygiene uh, promotion also. There are different tools, uh, different approaches to do this. Uh, you have a FAST, it's participatory hygiene and sanitation transformation. Um, I'll show you in the next lecture. Um, but it's, it's a way to get people to say, aha, I didn't know that. Or, aha, that's the way things are put together. Or, aha, if we work together in the village, we can actually get a solution. But you don't tell people, you go through a process where they realize themselves that this is, this is, this is like this. Because that aha feeling is so much more valuable than just being told. Something. Oh.
uh, I'm not going to show a video, uh, but CLTS is community-led total sanitation. Uh, it's a new method <laughs> uh, compared to uh, FAST. Uh, it's developed uh, uh, in the beginning of the millennium in Bangladesh. Uh, it works uh, completely different from uh, the FAST. Uh, it also say aha, but it say aha in the way that people get ashamed because it takes the, the, the villages through a process of finding out how much shit they are producing per year spread around the whole village. And then uh, you have a small trick with a, a glass of water and you, you bring some shit uh, into the presentation and take a, a toothpick or a match and you put it in just a little bit and say, this is like a, a fly sitting on the shit and sitting on your, your food. So have a glass of water. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, and then the worst thing is that uh, when people realize that it's not even their own shit they're drinking, it's their neighbor's shit. That's the worst thing. So everybody say, I don't want any shit in my food. I want to build a latrine today. So it's a different kind of aha uh, realization. Um, there are some disadvantages with this method also. Uh, uh, because if you don't know how to build a latrine, uh, you, might, you might build something that does not work very well. But it has been extremely popular the last 10 years in, in the whole world. Um, economic issues, sanitation is private. Uh, it should be paid by the people themselves. Uh, water supply is a different story because you share. Uh, so there you can have a different economic model. Um, you have the many projects giving subsidy in order to get things moving. Uh, but the problem is that when you start, no, you stop the project, you stop the subsidy and all activities will stop. So try to make a, a model uh, for implementation where you don't actually pay uh, for, for, for people's latrines because the day you leave and stop paying, no more activities. And that's a little bit stupid uh, when there are so many people, 2.8 billion people still needing latrines. We need to do it in a way where they can continue after we leave. We're not leaving, we're just going to the next village, but we would like the first village to continue activities. Um, in India, uh, the government actually gives subsidy to sanitation and uh, it puts a limit uh, because they say, well, uh, each organization promoting sanitation can apply uh, for, for this subsidy and then we will uh, give a, a number of latrines that can be uh, built with 50% uh, subsidy. Uh, so if it's 500 or if it's 5,000, it doesn't really matter. That organization cannot build number 501 because there's no subsidy. They cannot build 100 extra, even if there is a demand, because they have no subsidy. So try to work without subsidies. Um, in my mental issues, um, we need to stop spreading diseases. Uh, but that's uh, part of the, the job of sanitation. Um, we have this pollution of water sources through the soil. That's a risk if uh, the water source, the well or whatever, the river, is too, too uh, close to it. So we just remember uh, a safe, minimum safe distance of 10 meters. In some instances, it should be 50 or 100 meters. It depends on the soil. But in most cases, 10 meters is uh, okay because the bacteria cannot move very far. Uh, they, they get stuck in the soil. Um, <clears throat> yeah? Can we have a break soon? Yes, very soon. 
Um, there's a, something called demand responsive approach. Um, it's uh, about people having a choice. Uh, so by showing and explaining, discussing several methods uh, for sanitation, then you get more uh, people more engaged. Um, you need to think uh, in a broader sense, holistic about the water and sanitation uh, to make sure that the things are playing together and you need uh, to have a management at the lowest possible level. Um, again, in order to reach the, the target uh, group. And women uh, should play a, a key role because they are responsible for health, uh, hygiene. Okay, uh, the next lecture is about uh, uh, e IEC tools, uh, information, education, communication. Um, it's tools uh, that are used to uh, promote uh, the aim choice, informed choice, but also uh, you can use it for uh, general information, uh, uh, health education, uh, awareness raising. Uh, the tools are, are, are made for getting a proper uh, participation of the target group uh, to secure ownership and sustainability. Um, you can only secure sustainability if you make the uh, beneficiary group or target group participate in the decision making. Uh, so you need to involve people uh, so they feel it's their, their project uh, and their decisions. Um, you can call it a bottom-up process uh, compared to where you are imposing uh, solutions uh, that you have decided this is good for them. Me and my colleagues we would go out and say oh this is the proper solution, technical solution, uh, so this is what we do. Uh, without uh, consulting the, the users. Uh, so uh, that's a way you make mistakes with social culture uh, and you don't create ownership and the sustainability is lost. That's a top-down process that we don't want to repeat anymore. That was all time. Um, the informed choice is when you in sanitation, give people uh, several options uh, and you explain very well what are the implications, what are the costs, how do we build this, uh, how do we maintain it, what, the, what does it cost to operate. But you give them several choices and you give them the information so they can make an informed choice. Um, so um, that is what we call bottom-up process in, uh, in sanitation. Uh, it comes from, uh, <coughs> uh, it's an element of a demand uh, responsive approach, uh, uh, a concept uh, developed by uh, World Bank. Um, there should be a, a text uh, uploaded on uh, CampusNet. Now, uh, you have different levels. Information is one thing, uh, education is another thing, uh, and then you have communication, which should be uh, two-way. Uh, what you want to do is that uh, you want to increase the, the, the level of understanding for the target group. Generally, they have a low level uh, of knowledge. Uh, then you have to go in and see what, what kind of uh, approach can you use here depending on the group of people? Uh, if people have been in school, if they're already working, uh, you need one uh, level, uh, one way of uh, communicating with them. Uh, if uh, the group you're talking to have never been to school or very little, uh, then you need another level. Uh, you need to take uh, care of uh, talking to the decision makers it's not everybody taking the major decisions. You have some local leaders, 
you need to include them. Um, you might need to train uh, some people that can go and train others, training <coughs> of trainers. And then, of course, you have the beneficiary group, that's a, the whole target group, but that can be divided in men, women, children, uh, rich families, poor families, uh, lots of uh, different groups that might need to be approached uh, differently. Um, <coughs> you need a lot of meetings uh, uh, in the different stages of the, the project uh, with the different uh, stakeholder groups. Um, and then you need to uh, capacity build each of these uh, groups uh, according to what they actually need uh, to know and how, how much they can understand. Um, and then you need to keep on uh, with a, a high level of communication so everybody are informed. Uh, are, we are at the same level uh, all the time. So you have different tools uh, like this uh, participatory hygiene and sanitation transformation, uh, FAST, is developed by WHO uh, years back in the beginning of the 90s. Uh, it's still valid. Uh, uh, the, the other method, uh, CLTS, is also valid. Uh, both of them have advantages and disadvantages. Um, you can do public meetings like theater, music, uh, do something at a sports event, uh, a football game. You talk 10 minutes about sanitation and then you have 90 minutes of football. That's a nice share. Um, anything that gathers people. Uh, or you can have uh, meetings, uh, of course, where you invite specifically for, for, for some uh, training. Um, also, when you want to have uh, messages out, uh, you can use some, you can call them agents, uh, religious or uh, traditional gatherings uh, to convey messages. Uh, I've tried uh, several times in uh, Africa to meet up with uh, the local priests of the church uh, to, to test if uh, I can get him to talk about uh, sanitation. Then uh, I would actually attend uh, church that Sunday. Uh, so I could also say a few words or he could point at me or whatever. It always uh, results in uh, him coming to me the next day to save my soul. And then I says, no deal. <laughs> But maybe I don't have the right approach. Uh, maybe I'm not religious enough. Um, um, you can have printed materials in, uh, in, in different forms. Uh, there's some cost involved, uh, and you have to make sure that uh, people can actually read uh, what you are writing. Uh, the local radio and TV, if appropriate, uh, is very expensive. Uh, to do that. Uh, radio is, uh, is smarter, but then you need to have a big, big project. And TV is only if you go national. <coughs> um, the FAST uh, is a, a method using uh, simple pictures of water and sanitation related uh, situations uh, to promote uh, discussion. Um, among the, the, the group that uh, you are targeting. Uh, it's very important that the simple pictures are adapted to the local culture. Uh, so uh, it's easier to understand and, and, and uh, accept uh, for the people. Uh, so they don't sit and discuss why uh, is the background or the house looking different from in our village. Uh, which village is that from? Uh, then uh, the, the discussion about sanitation goes to another discussion. Um, so uh, a picture that is fit for a village in Ghana might not be fit for uh, working in Guatemala because houses and people look different. Um, also the, uh, uh, the water source uh, might be constructed in a different way. The latrines look different. So. Uh, it has to be made specifically for your uh, purpose. Uh, and then you have to remember that uh, in the villages, they don't have PowerPoint. So it has to be printed on 
papers uh, of a size that can actually be used in a group. Um, here we have an uh, example of uh, different cultures and uh, different pictures. Uh, this is uh, a picture that should animate talk about uh, domestic violence, but depending if you are in uh, Africa or in uh, India or in the United States, you'll have different background, different uh, people. The same situation in all pictures, but you cannot interchange. You have to get the right picture. And even for Africa, uh, if you go to West Africa or East Africa, you might need to change the picture because people are dressing uh, differently and the houses are different. Um, these are examples of pictures of daily situations. So, uh, washing, feeding the children, working in the field, and in the top picture, uh, a mother taking uh, water from a dirty uh, water source and putting it into the uh, water container. Um, these pictures are, are to animate discussions uh, and say what do, for example, what do women do uh, during the day? Uh, and then you can go into the uh, issue of uh, the water quality using another set of pictures. Uh, you could also use it to explain, uh, for example, here a construction technique, uh, how to get a latrine. You have something bad quality. If you have some money, you can go start digging, building, and you end up with a future latrine, a very nice quality, and even including the hand wash. But all <coughs> on pieces of paper uh, to be used in the village uh, to animate the talk. You just, you don't show them. You might give these eight uh, cards out and say, can you please sort them in a logical order? And then people will sit, uh, 10 or 12 people sit and, and discuss which is the logical order. And during that process, uh, five, 10 minutes, they'll say, oh, 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 it's all about building latrines, instead of you explaining it to them. Um, this is, uh, uh, a type of uh, blanket with pockets in it. Uh, so you can use it for information gathering. People, they get a, a handful of uh, st stones or beans, and then uh, you go out and, and, and ask the question, now, uh, the woman uh, will do what kind of work? Uh, get firewood, uh, clean the latrine, uh, get water. Uh, the man, what kind of work he will do. And then you put a stone or a bean into the pocket. And then uh, when everybody has been up there, then you can see who is doing most of the work. Um, and then of course, uh, uh, to discuss and learn, this is uh, the F diagram from uh, Dafur, uh, where they speak Arabic and they read from the other side. Uh, so that's the reason it's uh, up, it's turned around. Uh, you can actually cut out uh, these uh, round circles and then uh, cut out the arrows and then you can make people put it together uh, in the way uh, that they think is logic and during the discussion <coughs> they'll learn a lot compared to you explaining. So meetings, uh, small, big, here we find a, a place with a shade and sit down and talk with a group of uh, invited uh, stakeholders. Or we can have a, a, a gathering. Uh, this was at a school uh, where they make some uh, dancing uh, and then there'll be some talk uh, also. Uh, you can have a religious uh, leader explaining something. This is actually not a religious leader, this is my friend. Uh, from uh, Arusha. Uh, he was giving a speech at some gathering. Um, you can have training, classroom training or training in the field. This is from uh, Likamba, uh, where we are training uh, women to build latrines, female latrine builders. That's my favorite working partners. Um, <coughs> you can also this, this is a locally produced poster from uh, 
uh, India from West Bengal. Um, um, it's about uh, the danger of arsenic in the water. Uh, it's a little bit difficult for us to understand, but for the local Indians there, they fully understand because all these uh, these these uh, things here are uh, things connected to death, and all these uh, hand pumps, uh, blue hand pumps, they are also representing death. And up here we have all the dead people with uh, arsenic damages uh, to the skin. So it, it might not function to sh show it here or in Tanzania, but in uh, India it worked uh, very well and it was locally produced. Um, this is uh, a shorter version of the lecture for tomorrow, so we don't need to have a lecture tomorrow. Um, we had a friend uh, last year who had worked with uh, uh, disability issues, uh, <coughs> access uh, for handicapped people, uh, for water and sanitation. Uh, <coughs> of course, you have uh, different kind of uh, disabilities, uh, but not walking, uh, not seeing uh, are issues uh, using wheelchair. Um, how does it affect the way of designing uh, water and sanitation? You don't need to include this uh, uh, in your solutions. Uh, it's not uh, a part of the course, it's just an orientation. If you, at some stage, should be working uh, with water sanitation in the, uh, in the future, then please remember, but you don't need to use it now. Um, Um, I think Henrik, he might have uploaded uh, the long version, sorry, uh, so I might jump some. The, the, the purpose of uh, including uh, or, or thinking about uh, access to water and sanitation is to make sure that the disabled people get included in the society. For example, children uh, uh, who are in a wheelchair have difficulties attending school if there's no toilet where they can use it during the school day. So they don't go to school. They don't get an education. They just sit in the wheelchair their whole life. So if you can get the disabled people into society by including them, uh, then they will also have a, a future. Um, there are different issues getting there uh, depending on if, for example, you're using a wheelchair, you need to have uh, a smooth path uh, where you can get. Uh, you cannot uh, run across a, a ditch. Uh, you need to have a, a small uh, thing covering. Um, here, uh, it's just a small detail. You need uh, an edge uh, to collect the water, but you don't need to make it uh, this thick, uh, you can make it uh, shorter. Uh, you have a, a ramp for accessing the, the building, the toilet. Um, you need to make sure that there's enough space uh, so a wheelchair can get through. Um, and uh, you have here a public latrine uh, with steps and a handrail. I don't think it's fit for, for, for wheelchair. Uh, it's still too small a door. Um, you might need to have some uh, handrail handles uh, on the inside. And uh, you might need to have some seats. Uh, if you cannot walk, you can also not squat. Uh, but you might be able to sit. So these are different uh, solutions for how to use a toilet if you are in a wheelchair. Um, how to collect water? How to use water? Uh, if you're in a wheelchair, it could be some of these solutions. Uh, here we're talking about, uh, well, visually impaired uh, blind people. Uh, 
landmarks, uh, texture in the ground, uh, so they can feel where they are walking. Um, this is about size uh, of, uh, of the latrine cubicle and uh, also for the uh, hand pump. So you just have it in the back of your head that you might need a little bit extra space for those people. Now, uh, <coughs> the reason I, I took this in is because uh, I'm actually in connection with uh, uh, Rie. Uh, she's an architect uh, from Aarhus, and uh, she has uh, succeeded to get money to make a, uh, you could say, design project in Uganda. Uh, in uh, this summer, uh, July, August, uh, for three weeks, uh, where they have some uh, model of a handicap uh, latrine in a school in uh, Kampala, where they want to improve the model. Um, and she's looking for students, engineering students, uh, to participate in uh, workshops, uh, working together with the Ugandan uh, students and, and uh, other stakeholders. So uh, if anybody are interested to go to Uganda uh, this summer, then uh, come and talk to me afterwards. Yep, that's it.